everybody, and welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to tell you exactly what I would do if I was starting all over again and I wanted to get into real estate development. Man, I really wish I had known what I'm about to tell you when I first started. I was on a call the other day with a, a couple who booked a call with me. They were in the same mastermind that we were in, and they wanted to get into the development business. And they said, look, we know very little about this. We know a little bit, but not much. Can we book a call with you? And I said, sure, happy to sit down with you. And I think she was in her like late 30s, uh, maybe even mid 30s, her husband probably in his, his early 40s, uh, maybe even late 40s. And they were just getting started. And I wish that I had known what I, what I was telling them on this call. And so I want to tell you exactly what, what we did on this call. It was kind of funny. We actually found out that they weren't going into development business. They actually wanted to go into the manufacturing business. And so that was a completely different business than they thought they were getting into. And that was really good to know because if you don't know what business you're in, then it's really hard to make decisions on what to do. So we're able to get them some clarity and a way ahead. But for me, what I, what I told them, I said, Hey, if I was going to get into development again, I would basically follow these steps right here. Step number one, not knowing anything about development, I would first figure out where I wanted to do development and I would focus on the developer friendly areas because it's much, much easier to get stuff pushed through there than it is the areas that are not pro development. So I'd figure out who they are. I would do that by going to the areas and sitting down with the planning commission or, you know, trying to meet with like the mayor. Usually there's this go to uh, liaison between the planning commission and the city. They work for the city and they're kind of the voice and uh, of the city and just walk in or try to schedule an appointment, whatever that is, and see if you can't take a meeting to sit down and ask them what the vision for the community is. And if they're pro developed, and just listen to their needs and ask them, make it about them. What's lacking in the community? You know, how are you guys doing on, on tax revenue? What are the citizens complaining about? You know, what do you guys need? And listen to what they say. Because the whole idea is to reverse engineer what the city needs. I promise you, if you give the city what it wants and what it needs, your whole life is going to be a whole lot easier. This whole process will be a whole lot easier. So I'd sit down with the city and they'll tell you, pull out a map and say, okay, which areas of land are not the highest and best use? Where do you guys want to see density? You know, whether it's commercial or maybe it's residential, figure out what that vision looks like. And that'll tell you the areas that you then need to go focus on. So that's step one, sit down with the city, figure out what the vision is, figure out what the pain points are and understand what their needs are. Step two is Drive the whole community, and I'm not joking, don't leave any stone unturned, and get an idea of where the developments are. What's going up? Is it single family housing? Is it a lot of commercial? You know, try to get on the phone and sit down with some commercial agents, uh, some commercial brokers, and get an idea of what's selling and what's not selling. So figure out who the players are, figure out who the, the, the go to commercial brokers are. You know, sit down, take them to coffee, buy them lunch, whatever introduce yourself, say, I'm new to town and this is what I'm looking to do. This is what I'm looking for. And I would go and I would start meeting with the other developers or the other builders in the area. So if you're driving by development, park your car, get out, figure out whose it is, reach out to that person, sit down with them face to face. I would start building what I would call, you know, my, my buyer's list. So if I wanted to, if I found the development, like who would I partner with or who would I sell it to? That's the first thing that I would do because I'm building my list of partners because I don't know anything about development at this point, which means I'm going to have to partner with somebody. So that's step two is figure out who the players are in the market and sit down with them. Step three is I would then start going to the exact people who own the land that I'm looking to develop because I've got a good idea of what areas the city wants to see development and which pieces of land are not the highest and best use. I now have a list of potential partners to partner on. Now I need to start going and breaking through what I call the the, the chaos of society, right? We are inundated with emails and text messages and voicemails and phone calls 
the key here is to break through. And quite frankly, I think one of the best ways to break through is just go knock on people's door, right? We don't talk to a ton of people per year, but we have a very high close rate on the developments that we do have on the pipeline because of our value add strategy. It becomes a very easy conversation when you can go to somebody and say, hey, you got a piece of land and a home on it that's worth four or $500,000 right now. If I could offer you $800,000 for it, would you be interested? And they've got a pretty good idea of what the value of their home is because they know what's selling in the area. And they're like, well, yeah, uh, how, how are you going to pay me $300,000 more than what my home or land is currently worth? And then you explain the process that you want to take it through. And you will put that piece of land under contract with a uh, contingency to get it rezoned for X number of units. So you'll put it under contract and this is where your partner comes in. Once you have that, con and you, you'll be honest with the seller and say, hey, this is what I do. I'm a developer, uh, I partner with builders, we develop land, and here's how we're able to give them a whole bunch of money that's more than what their home's currently worth. And this strategy works. After you get it under contract, that's when you start going to your list of other developers and other builders that you've made and say, hey, I've got a piece of land right here. Are you interested in it? Let's look at it and ask them to sit down face to face and go through and have them show you how they analyze it. Because now they're going to be like, wow, this person actually has something. And if you show them that you're going to be bringing them parcels of land, they're more willing to sit down, give you time and actually show you the process of how they analyze it. They'll show you how to pull sewer maps from the city and water maps. It's kind of the next step that you want is to see exactly what can you get the density there? Because typically you need sewer and water to do that. If not, hey, you know, do you need to do like a step septic system or how many homes can you get on there with a septic system? So you'll start looking at these different things, the zoning, et cetera. So that's the third step. That's that's the third step that I would do. Now, once you've contracted for a specific outcome and you've got a partner in place. Now just the learning process takes place. I mean, even if you've got to give up the majority of equity in the deal just to get the deal done so that you understand how to do it in the future, that's huge. And that's really all there is to it. We've got, you know, multiple people who are doing this. They're, they're bringing us land deals and they're wanting to uh, kind of get coached through the process and we're able to, to monetize these deals that they're not able to monetize because they just don't have the experience or the capital to take it through that entitling process or that rezone process. It does cost money. Uh, you do have to pay a civil engineer to design things. You've got to get that, 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 those construction drawings approved by the city. Someone's going to have to pay the civil engineer. And that's why bringing in a developer partner, building that list in step two is so important. You want to make sure you, bring, you can bring that partner in and uh, they can coach you through everything. They can do all the heavy lifting. They can pay for things. They've already got the relationships with the civil engineers and you're just a fly on the wall learning. And that's how I would do my very first development all over again.